Amen. Let's go to, let's see, we always start out in uh, 2 Corinthians 11. And then we'll be in Matthew 24. Talking about things that are false. Not things that are not true. Um, pray, for, pray for Sunday school. Pray for the message this morning. I got a message on backsliding. And uh, if you've ever been there, you know what that is. Second, uh, Second Corinthians 11, verse 12. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion. That's the setup for verses 13, 14, and 15. Is that deal of occasion. They want people to notice them. They want people to glorify them. They want people to uh, bow down to them or cave to them or whatever. They want to be elevated above other people. Um, Jesus called it the doctrine and the deeds of the Nicolaitans. In Revelation, the book of Revelation, he's writing the letters to the seven churches. And he said that he, that he hated the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. He hated the deeds of the Nicolaitans. And people say, what is that? Nico is a Greek word which means to conquer. Nicholas is where we get the word Nicholas from. The name Nicholas means a king or a ruler. The laetain is the laity, the people in the pews. And... Whenever you have in any religious organization, whether it's even in Christianity or it's in Buddhism or Islam or Judaism or wherever, there is always the exaltation of the clergy over the laity. In other words, the priest or the rabbi or the monk or the minister or whoever is always exalted above the common people. Roman Catholic Church is all about the doctrine and the deeds of the Nicolaitans. By the way, I bought a book at Goodwill the other day, and it's, a, it's about this thick. It's actually, from what I could see, it's thicker than a Bible. And it's the Catholic Catechism. Okay? Whenever you have to have a book that's bigger than the Bible to explain your... Why don't you just give them the Bible? Amen? But I, I, I was opening it up, and I mean, I turned right to the page that deals with the Ten Commandments. And in their, in their catechism, they take out the Second Commandment. Take it out. Take it completely out. Act like it's not even there. The Second Commandment is, you should not make unto thee any graven images. They take it out. And then in its place, they replace it with the 10th commandment. They divide it in two. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, and then thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. That's the 10th commandment. They take the second commandment out. Who has the right to do that? Nobody does, but they think they do. And, be, and it's because their house is full of idols, and they want everybody to bow to these images made of stone, images made of wood, covered with gold or whatever, that's what they want, and they're going to teach people that it's okay to do that, and it's not okay to do that. But the, the Catholic Church is all about uh, exalting the priest, or the bishops, or the cardinals, or the pope, to exalt them above everybody in the pew, so that if you are a Roman Catholic, and you want to read the Bible, you will be cautioned by your church to be careful reading the Bible, be careful that you do not read something that disagrees with the Catholic Church. And so they even, and I've, I've showed this before, Brother Chris Pinto showed this, he found it in a Catholic Bible, in a list of forbidden books, the King James Bible was at the top of the list of books that they don't want Roman Catholics to read. And the reason for that is they have exalted the clergy over the people. In other words, if you want to hear from God, you must hear from us what God tells you. 
And that is not what the Bible says. It says, beware of false prophets, beware of these deceitful workers. You have as much right to read and to know what this Bible says as any clergyman, any, any priest, any rabbi, and so on. And so Jesus said he abhorred their doctrine and he abhorred their, their deeds. So that's what, is, that's what you're looking at in verse 12 when Paul uses that word occasion. And he said, but I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. Then verse 13, for such are false apostles. And that's what he's, that's what he's building up to. They desire occasion. They want you listening to them. They want your attention. They want your obedience. And they want your money. They want your soul. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Now turn to Matthew 24. Matthew 24, um, Mark... Mark 13, Luke 21, they are synoptic. They are basically saying close to the same thing. And um, this is uh, Jesus on the Mount of Olives, and he's teaching about what is going to happen in the end times. Because his disciples came and asked him, but t tell us, because he said of the temple uh, that not one stone would be left on another. And his disciples, this, they're going... When is this going to happen? And so Jesus began to tell them the signs and the signs of these false prophets, Matthew 24, verse 23, that if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is Christ or there, believe it not. So let me ask you a question. Where is Christ right now? Right hand of the father. All right. Um, his word and his Holy Spirit are here with us. In indwelling in the believer, guiding us, leading us, uh, causing us to repent, giving us godly sorrow, causing us to speak to people and so on. But Christ is at the right hand of the Father. So if anybody says, right here, this is Jesus, you're not to believe it. If anybody else says, over here is Jesus, you're not to believe it. Um, when people start telling you, when Oral Roberts, Oral Roberts told everybody and a lot of people believed him that he had a vision that Jesus came to him and Jesus was 300 feet tall stupidest thing I ever heard in my life but that Jesus told him to build a hospital in Tulsa Oklahoma and he went and got all the money that he needed from everybody and when he talked to the city officials of Tulsa, Tulsa told him, we don't need another hospital. But God told me to build a hospital. And so he built a hospital, took everybody's money and built a hospital. Uh, it didn't work. It didn't last. It's an office building now. They rent out. And um, then, of course, if you remember back in the, what was it, the late 80s, early 90s, God told Earl Roberts that he needed, what was it? $20 million, $60 million, something like that. God needed it. And uh, so Earl Roberts locked himself in a room and said, God's going to kill me if we don't get this money gathered. And I'm hoping, I hope they don't get the money. I hope they don't get it. Okay? Somebody, somebody donated the money. I don't know what, what they were thinking, but anyway. But they're, they're always talking about how they met Jesus, how they had a conversation with Jesus and so on. And, and Jesus said, don't believe it. The Catholic Church will bring out a wafer and they will say, this is Christ. Eat Christ. This is Christ. You're not to believe that. Christ is at the right hand of the Father. <clears throat> so he said, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets the whole idea of the antichrist is that he is the he is in the place of christ he is the opposite of christ he is a false christ and remember uh in second corinthians 11 we were dealing with another jesus another spirit and another gospel 
And this goes right along with that. There shall arise false Christ. David Koresh. You remember the Branch Davidian compound in Waco. David Koresh taught uh, the Branch Davidian was a group, a sort of a breakaway group of the Seventh-day Adventists. And Koresh had convinced these people that he was the second coming of Christ, that he personally was Christ. And, and those people gave, forfeited everything, and they forfeited their lives to follow this man. All right? When they could have believed the Bible where it said, you're not Christ. There shall arise false Christ, false prophets shall show great signs and wonders. Don't be deceived by magic tricks. Don't be deceived by lying signs and wonders. Turn to Revelation 13. <clears throat> Revelation 13. This is how the false prophet will deceive people. He will do, he will have the ability to do signs and wonders. He's going to call fire down from heaven and it's going to work. It's actually going to happen. So in verse 11 of Revelation 13, I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb. So you see all these people going around doing this, right? Okay. And I guarantee you, somebody's going to get a Screen capture me doing this. Get the context of what I'm talking about. The false prophet has two horns like a lamb. And you see all these rock and roll stars and everybody doing this. Okay, that's what that is in reference to. The false prophet in his two horns like a lamb. I know I'm going to get in trouble. Somebody going to make a video on me doing that. Okay, so anyway, when it comes out, just remember that I, that I was talking about the false prophet. So anyway, a two horns like a lamb... And he spake as a dragon. Think about that. His words are not the words of God. They're the words of Satan. He speaks as a dragon. Then verse 12. He exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth, verse 13, here it is. He doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Think of and a lot of these charismatic slash Pentecostal uh, preachers are all about the signs and wonders. And they are deceiving people by means of these lying signs and wonders. There'll be, there'll be reports, and there are reports, of churches where they say gold dust is coming down out of, this, out of the sky, falling on those people. Now, if you believe that, I got some swamp land down in Louisiana I want to sell you. Okay, but that's what they're talking, all these gold dust, and, angel, and they, then they say angel feathers are coming down. Because there's, there's angels in the room, and they deceive people with this stuff. Whether it's really happening or not, I don't care. I mean, anybody can fake signs and wonders. But in some cases, I believe that they are real. But they are lying, so they're meant to deceive people. The other Bethel church in Redding, California, the anti, I call it the anti-Bethel church, with, uh, what's his name, Bill Johnson is the pastor. They are all about the lying signs and wonders. They will have angel feathers coming down. They will have gold dust coming down upon people. And, people, and then they'll tell people to go to graves of Christians that had anointing on their life. And they go to the grave to get the leftover anointing out of their, out of their grave. That's necromancy. That's something that God specifically forbid the Israelites to do. In, uh, what was it, Deuteronomy 18, God said, don't, don't follow those people. But anyway, the lying signs and wonders are everywhere. The false prophets, they will, they will pretend to heal people. They will pretend that they can do great wonders and great miracles. And they're all about the miracles. And when people are 
sucked in by the miracles, then they will give out their false doctrine and they're going to believe it because they believe that that person is some great man of God. There it is. It's all about occasion. Lifting up and exalting the man or the woman who can make the great speeches, the man or the woman who can cause fire to come down from heaven, who can cause miracles to happen and so on, and then deceive people by means of those miracles. It, it's, in other words, it's what I'm going to teach is not in the Bible, but I want you to believe that it's from God, so I'm going to give you, I'm going to perform a magic trick to make you think that I'm some great person. And I have been a just an amateur student of magic. And when I say magic, I'm talking about, you know, magician's tricks, making a coin disappear and things like that. And I study, have studied in the past, how they do these things. And there are people who can do little tricks and make people think that they can read their mind or make people think that they can make things appear or disappear or that they can move things with their mind or whatever. And it's a lying sign and wonder. People don't be deceived by the magicians. Don't be deceived. You have the word of God. You have God's word right here before you. And if they say anything that doesn't match this Bible, I don't care what kind of sign they perform, believe them not. Amen? Well, that's how these people get sucked in. And so the purpose of these false prophets is in verse 15 and 16 he had power to give life under the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed in verse 16 here's the end game right here and he causeth all both small and great rich and poor free and bond six things here to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads and of course, that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred three score and six. So the, the end game, the, the deception point, is to get people to worship the image of the beast, which God said, thou shalt not do. Then to receive that mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Once that mark has been received, whoever takes that is doomed. I don't care what John MacArthur said. I don't care what anybody else said. I don't care what Tim LaHaye said. I don't care. You take that mark, you're doomed for eternity. So don't, and people come up with this scenario. Well, they're going to force people to take the mark. I don't agree. I think they're going to cause people. People are going to volunteer to do this. Al, you're being baptized today, right? Yes, sir. Did I force you to do it? No, sir. Am I making you do it? No, sir. It's your choice, isn't it? it is. Glad to do it. Amen? I am God. Amen. That's a choice. Everybody is going to make a choice in the last days, and people are going to choose. They're going to want to receive this mark. They're going to make promises to them of something that is going to happen to them or how God is going to bless them or God's going to do this or whatever. But they're going to voluntarily receive this mark. And people are making their choice right now. So back in Matthew 24, um, verse 24, great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. The very elect does not mean those who are more elect than others. Very means truly or truthfully. And what it means is the truly elect will not be deceived. But we know that there are false brethren. Just as there are false prophets and false teachers... There are false brethren. And there are people who are claiming that they are saved and that they are the elect of God, but in truth, they are not. 
And so the very elect, the ones who are truly saved and have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God abiding in them, they will not be deceived. So my advice to you is today, read your Bible and know the Bible. Know what it says and, and ask God, God, in the day that this stuff breaks out, Please, God, do not let me be deceived. And read your Bible. And then go read it again. And then go read it again. And read it some more. I, I am still learning things from this Bible. I'm not done learning. And I don't want to be done. I want, I asked God 20 years ago, God, give it to me all now. How foolish was I? Because if God would have given it to me all then, I wouldn't have anything else to study now. So I'm glad he didn't give me everything that I'm supposed to know. He just gives it out to me like daily bread. Amen? So I'm still getting, I'm still eating. I'm still reading. I'm still, there's still things I don't know that I want to know. And as long as I want to know them, I keep studying and I keep reading. God showed me something last week that just blew my mind. And I can't, I'm at this thing now, I can't study enough to get it in. Okay? And I, anyway, I'm, I promised everybody I wasn't going to say what it was until I'm ready. And I'm, so don't ask me. I'm not going to tell you. But you'll like it, I promise you. Now look at verse 25, Matthew 24. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if any shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. This is why my ancestors are buried facing east. Amen? A lot of cemetery, Christian cemeteries, they're always facing east. Why? Because they, they're laying in that grave and they say, we want, since we're going first, we want to be facing Jesus when he appears in the clouds. Amen? So, now I'm not saying that if something happens and they mess up and turn your casket around, that I'm not saying you're not going. All right? I'm just, that was just what was in their minds. They know he's coming from the east, so they're going, we want to be facing east. Amen. But anyway, that's the whole point. Of the false teachers, the false prophets, the false uh, Christians, false brethren, and so on. Performing lying signs of wonder. Turn to Deuteronomy 13. Deuteronomy 13. God warned, God, Jesus said, behold, I've told you before. He said it all the way back here in Deuteronomy 13. He said, verse 1, if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams. And giveth thee a sign or a wonder. And the sign of the wonder come to pass. Whereof he spake unto thee saying. Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known. Let us serve them. Notice that he said in verse 2. That the sign of the wonder will come to pass. Okay. He said that. There, there are ways that magicians. Mentalists. Can get information out of you. Without you knowing it. There are ways that mentalists can manipulate your mind into choosing something. I, I was watching this guy. He's a, he's a street mentalist. And he goes out cities and has a camera crew following around. And he does mental magic on people. And he did one experiment where he walked up to this guy. And he, would, he saw this guy reading the newspaper. And he walked up to this guy and he asked him, he said, can, can I, you know, have your attention for a minute? And the guy said, yeah. He said, I want you to hold your finger out like this. And he said, hold your head like this. And he said, I want you to look and stare right at your finger for one minute. And so the guy did that. And then he said, um, I can't remember, how did he do this? He wrote down, he the, the mentalist wrote on a piece of paper three words. And as he was having this guy 
look at his finger for a minute. He was doing the magic, and I'll tell you what that was in a minute. And then he had him read his paper, and he said, I want you to, on this newspaper, I want you to pick three words from this article, just at random, just any three words. So the guy circled three words in this article on this paper. And so when he showed the mentalist the paper and those words that he circled, the words that the mentalist wrote down on his paper were the exact same words that the guy chose out of the article. He made him choose these three words. And how he did it was, while he was looking at this finger, he held up back here the three words that he wrote on, on paper. And your brain is constantly receiving information from your peripheral vision. While you're looking at me, you can see most of the rest of the room. And your brain is taking this all in, but it's not coming directly at you. You're not focusing on it. And I didn't explain it right, but he basically forced this guy to pick these three words because they were going in through his peripheral vision. Your brain is hearing sounds in the room that you're not focused on. Your brain is feeling and sensing things around you that you're not concentrating on. And your eyes are picking up information that you're not looking at. And your brain is doing this. God gave you a wonderful brain. If you've ever been, if you've ever had your attention drawn to something and you wasn't sure why, that's your brain picking up on little things going on around you that you're not concentrating on. Anyway, I'm making, making a long story short. The devil has ways of convincing people of things. Okay? And he never comes in the front door. Remember what Jesus taught us about. He said, I'm the, I'm the door. And he said, I'm the door of the sheepfold. The sheepfold is your mind. Okay? And he said, anybody, any false prophet or any teacher that wants to come in, they will not use the door. They'll come in some other way. And so anyway, there's ways that false prophets, false teachers will use methods that they have to convince people of certain things and it's all done secretly it's all done uh, coercively it's all done subversively subliminally it's all done in those ways whereas Jesus I like Jesus because he said behold I stand at the door and knock Jesus never kicks the door in he never forces his way in he said I stand at the door and knock if any man will open I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. The devil never knocks on the door. He always slips in some other way. Okay? Just something for you to keep in mind as you're reading your Bible. But anyway, verse 2. It's a sign of the wonder come to pass wherever he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. The purpose, the false teachers, the false prophets, the false miracle workers, the people who do lying signs and wonders, the purpose of them is so that God can filter out who really believes and who doesn't. That's the purpose of it. God gave us his word, all 66 books, gives it to us freely, asks us to believe it. And there are millions upon millions of people who say that they are Christian, who say that they believe in God and believe in Jesus Christ. I'm not their judge, but God said that the purpose of false prophets and false teachers is to filter out who really does believe and who doesn't. God said that Babylon is a golden cup in the Lord's hand. And I pondered that for a long time, Jeremy. I'm going, what in the world? But then it dawned on me, God uses mystery Babylon. God will use the false teachers and the false prophets to sort out. Remember, he's the separator between the sheep and the goats. And the sheep are the ones who believe what God said. The goats are the ones who are going to follow after the false prophets and the false teachers. And they're looking for the signs and the miracles and the wonders. 
And they're waiting for these guys to deceive them because they're going to believe exactly what they say. 2 Peter chapter 2, turn there. I covered a lot of this in uh, Pastor Mike Online, I think, last week. But it's good to go through it again, just for a little bit this morning. 2 Peter chapter, I'm in 1 Peter, there we go. 2 Peter chapter 2, there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily, see that word privily? What does that word mean? You ever been to a privy room? You ever had to go to the privy? Secret. Okay? Privily. Secretly. They're going to they're gonna slip the doctrines in while you're not aware of it. Okay? Rick Warren boasted this years ago. He, in his book, The uh, Purpose Driven Church, he boasted about this. He boasted of the fact that he taught certain doctrines out of the Bible and the people never, it never occurred to them that that's what he was doing. He felt like that he could shroud the doctrines that he was teaching in, I don't know how he did it, but he shrouded, he covered up the doctrines that he was teaching and he got the people to believe that even though they didn't realize that that was what he was doing. And my question is, why did he feel necessary to do it that way? If I'm going to teach about baptism, I'm going to say, let's look at the Bible and see what the Bible says about baptism, and I'm going to tell you this is what the Bible says about baptism. If I'm going to teach you about false prophets and false teachers, we're going to read the Bible, and I'm going to say this is what we're... I don't feel the need to shroud or to cover up what it is that I'm saying. False teachers and false prophets, they always conceal what it is they're doing. Always. Remember, Babylon's first name is mystery. And everything about her and about her teaching and about her, what it is that she wants people to receive is all a cover-up. It's shrouded. She's going to bring it in privily. All right? So, that's what they're doing. They privily shall bring in damnable heresies. The heresies themselves are damnable. Those that teach them will be damned. Those that believe them will be damned. Even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious. Pernicious means very dangerous ways. Many. That's why they can build mega churches. That's why their churches will run 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 people. That's why Joel Olstein took over an entire basketball stadium in Houston, Texas, bought it, gutted it, converted it into his new church, and it can seat 40, 50,000 people or something like that. It's because many follow their pernicious ways. Uh, and by, by way of whom the way of truth, or by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. They'll speak evil of the King James Bible. And verse 3, through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. That's the purpose of it. The purpose is the false teacher is guilty of violating the 10th commandment. Thou shalt not covet. He covets. He wants fame, he wants money, he wants nice house, he wants that nice car, he wants a private jet, he wants to wear the best clothes, he wants to have all of that money, he wants to have all that fame and all that fortune. And how is he going to get it? He's not getting it from God, he claims he's getting it from God, but he's not getting it from God, he's getting it from people. He has made merchandise of them. So he will write a book or... He'll have someone write it for him. Okay? I don't think Joel Osteen wrote all of his books. I can't prove it. But I know that people employ what they call ghost writers. You know what that is? It's got their name on it. It's got Joel Osteen's name on it, but he didn't write it. He had somebody write it for him. Paid him well. Okay? But he's selling the book 
somebody else wrote. But by and large, they're going to sell these books, high price. They're going to say, you need this teaching. You need this anointing. You need this. You need that. You can't make it without this. And for your love gift of $35 plus 20 postage and handling, and it doesn't cost $20. I'm telling you, it doesn't cost $20. The book doesn't cost $35 either. Okay? We make books here. And we make DVDs here, and we do it cheaply, and we give them away because it's wrong to make merchandise of people. If I've got something that I think everybody ought to have, then it's my obligation to make it free of charge and let God pay for it, and he has. I'm just telling you how that works. Somebody, uh, uh, one of these sales companies called me years ago. They don't call me no more. And they said, your church, we've got a, we've got a valuable lesson pack for your church. I said, really, what is it? And they said, we've got Dr. So-and-so, and, -so, and we've, we've brought in Dr. You know, Such-and-Such, -such, and we've brought in these big names, and we have this, this DVD package, and for your gift uh, of $400, we'll send you these five DVDs. $400? Are you kidding me? And I told the lady, I said, ma'am, I said, we produce DVDs here at our church, and I said, they cost us about 35 cents. I said, who's getting all this? I did. I asked, I said, who's getting all this money? Where's the rest of this money going to? And she didn't answer it. She got off the phone very quickly with me. But I, that's, they will make merchandise of people. And there's a lot of really smart lost people who have it in their minds that all churches are after are their money. And it's because they've had the wolves come in to them wanting their money, wanting their money, wanting their money. And they're smarter than that. So anyway, through covetous shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not. Uh, if we look down to um, verse 10, chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government, Presumption, that means that they despise biblical areas of authority. This is why they will have women like Joyce Myers stand and over men and teach men in a congregation, and it's unbiblical. Joyce Myers, uh, Paula White, Beth Moore, uh, she's big among the Southern Baptists. And I don't know how these guys, how these pastors can bring these women in and have them teach their congregation when the Bible specifically says that they're, that's out of order and that's out of line. I don't get how they do that, but that's how they despise government. They despise God's rule of authority. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. That means they do not follow God. They follow their own will and their own lust. They are not afraid to speak evil of uh, dignities. Verse 12, but these as natural brute beasts. Now there's your connection right there. Natural brute beasts. Uh, what verse is that? Verse 12. That means they have a beast nature. Cannot be reasoned with. Cannot, you cannot logically talk to them and explain Bible doctrine. They're not going to receive it. They're not going to accept it. Um, the devils that control these men and women are themselves beasts. Uh, turn to Revelation 16. Yeah, Revelation 16. And let's see. Okay, Where is it? Yeah, verse 12. Or verse 13. Revelation 16, 13. I saw three unclean spirits like what? Frogs, frogs or beasts, come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. I'm going to be preaching on that tonight or this afternoon. Uh, I'm going to. I, I think I'm going to start a, a series on the Exodus, how the children of Israel went from Egypt 
to the promised land. It's going to take me about eight years to complete it. So just bear with me, okay? But we'll have fun doing it, all right? But anyway, at least I'm being honest to you, okay? Uh, God is calling us as soldiers. We're his soldiers. We are the army of God, and the devil is afraid of us. Mark it down. The de- Why did Pharaoh, in Exodus 1, want to put the Israelites into cruel bondage, into slavery? Why did Pharaoh do that? He specifically said, it's because the Jews are more and mightier than we are, And if we ever start a war with somebody, they're going to side with our enemies and they'll conquer us. And they specifically put them in cruel bondage because they were afraid of them. You you ponder that. When the devil threatens you, there's a reason why he's doing it. Okay? If you've ever encountered some, a neighbor's dog or something like that, and the neighbor's dog, you know, or a cat or something like that, they'll get their haunches up. And they'll show their teeth and they'll bark and growl at you. There's a reason why that dog is doing that. That dog is afraid of you. God put a fear of you in that dog's nature. And he is barking and growling and showing his teeth and trying to enlarge himself to to scare you away because he is scared of you. You ponder that for a while. The devil doesn't have the authority over you that he wants you to think he has. Can I get God's people to say amen? Okay? Saved by the bell. But anyway, beware of false prophets. Beware of false teachers. Beware of false doctrines. They are everywhere. They're using YouTube. They're using Facebook. They're using social media. And so are we. Everything that I do is an attempt to counteract what these false teachers are trying to do trying to do in social media somebody and there's still there are a lot of good preachers out there still somebody needs to be the alternative view to what these guys are teaching somebody's got to be out there with the truth saying these guys are lying through their teeth and bold enough to say it amen people don't fall for it i've lost you wouldn't believe how many people i've seen leave out of good churches and fall after that junk Okay, and all they're doing is taking their money and their souls away. So if you know somebody like that, pray for them because God can deliver anybody. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this book. Thank you, Lord, for what it is, what it means, what it says. Thank you, God, for instilling it in our hearts. God, you you had every right to take us and cast us away. You had every right, Lord, to cause us to follow after the false teachers and the false prophets. And maybe, Lord, some, Lord, that are hearing today at one time fell for it. But God, you had your way in that. You wanted to teach them. You wanted to show them. And you wanted to bring them out of that. And, Lord, you did. And we thank you for it. And, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the word. Teach it to us, God. Guide us with it. Lead us. Father, help us, dear God, to be on your side in the day of battle. And, Father, give us the victory, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.